Yeah, do you know when all this happened? I mean, I got a call last night, but is there any word on Um, Sometime between Thursday and uh, last night. We're, we're not sure yet. We haven't been pointed yet. Um, and you said that maybe multiple people, because he's a big guy, it was, I mean, maybe you can't talk about this, but was there, um, was there, like, any kind of weapon used, or, um, or was there... Was, it, was there a gun? Was there? I can't say what type of, of weapon was used, but yeah, I, I, I'm guessing there was a weapon used by the type of injuries that were left behind. Um, do, do you know of him having any weapons at all in the house? Um, his two fists. Really? No. no yeah. I, no, no was, handguns or rifles or. No, he wasn't know, one to keep any of that that I found. Fighting knives. No, he was more into, like, wrestling and UFC, and he had, you know, he said he had just bought a punching bag, and yeah. he's like, I love the crap out of the punching bag, you know. Um, I guess that was supposed to happen before the beginning of July. 
um, July. He was supposed to go to Washington, D.C. Okay. Did, did he have uh, any issues with anybody here in, in town? Any enemies? Um, anybody that wanted to do him harm? You know, not his tires black. It was last year. Uh, he was. He, he said he was worried about that. Um, and I was worried about that. He never locked his doors. And I told, I would tell him, lock your doors. And he'd be like, you're not my mom, you know. And um, I come from, I, he comes from a, a bad city. I, he comes from Ruby, Doo, California, which is gangs and violence. But, and I come from a similar uh, type of neighborhood in California. So I've always, my parents and I, we've always locked our doors. And that's just my habit. But he doesn't have that habit. And he lives in a great neighborhood. And it's never been an issue. Nothing has ever been stolen. Nothing has ever been, he's never been, you know, broken into. And, and he had his tires flashed, um, I don't remember when it was. It was last year sometime around Christmas, I think. Um, and, you know, other than that. Now, you know, how, how would you describe your, your relationship with him? We dated for, we dated for like five months. And we broke up and we continued actually to see each other for uh, quite a bit, um, you know, right up until I moved. So when did you guys uh, break up? We officially broke up June 29th of last year. But we didn't, we, even though we broke up, we were no longer boyfriend and girlfriend. We decided to remain friends, but, you know, I, I kind of feel embarrassed talking about this, but it was more like, it was more than friends, but it wasn't boyfriend and girlfriend. It was more like kind of buddy, you know what I mean? Okay. So you guys were not like uh, romantically uh, together at any time, or we we were intimate, um, but I wouldn't say romantic as far as the relationship goes. But we were in no way headed toward marriage. Uh, we're talking anything about that. We hung probably sometimes. Now you say intimate. Does, does that include like a sexual relationship with him? Yeah, it does. I know it's kind of embarrassing to talk about stuff I know. Like that, and, and I, you don't know it, me, so. Yeah, and if you could just keep it confidential for now, yeah. because I know that it, you know, he's Mormon, he's not seriously looked down upon in my not church, and I mean, I just am telling you this to help in any way I can. Okay, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so you actually moved back to California a couple of months ago? Yeah, I did. Okay, what, what date was that? Um, I don't remember the exact date. I mean, I have the date that I'm in the U-Haul. It was early April. Early, like before April 10th. So it's after the first, but before the 10th. So I'm guessing 7th, 8th, ninth, maybe. I'd have to check the dates, though. Did, did you stop by the house uh, when you rented the U-Haul to say goodbye to him? Oh, yeah. In fact, um, after I was, I was almost moved out completely out of my house for about a week afterward, and I just stayed at his house the whole time. I mean, I practically lived there, um, even when I was there. I spent, I spent the night there several times a week while I lived there. Um, I came over and I cleaned his house a lot. He sort of, he paid me a little bit every month to keep his house nice and clean. Sort of like a housekeeper. So. Um, did you ever uh, happen to meet any of his roommates at that time? Um, at the time, time yeah, I knew his group really well at the time. Um, Various roommates, some have moved out. One guy moved to Utah and one guy moved to Phoenix. Um, Zach is the, I don't know if Zach is still there. I think he is. Yeah, he is. Um, I knew Zach because I met him. And, uh, you know, we, we sort of connected because he's a photographer like I am. And, you know, he took the room that, that Aaron was, was in previously. So, yeah. Zach and, and what, do you, what do you think about Zach? What, what, what do you think his relationship is with, uh, with your ex-boyfriend? Um, he seemed like a nice guy when I first met him. He seemed um, just like a normal guy, the return missionary um, from, and he served his, he, he, uh, okay, good, I didn't lose you. Um, he, served his, he served his mission, I don't, I think in Arizona, and he liked it so much that he was back. He knew Travis from church, so, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, him and his girlfriend were there. There, I think there was some alcohol there at one time, and Travis um, was suspicious about it, but he said he used it for cooking, you know, that's fine, because, you know, Mormons don't drink alcohol, but, um, well, some uh, do. <laughs> yeah, so they're not supposed to, <laughs> and Travis, you know, that's another thing when it came to that, we call it the word of wisdom, no alcohol, tobacco, drugs, yeah. or, or, or co 
coffee or tea, and he was just super, super, super strict on that. Yeah, he wouldn't even take Excedrin for a headache because it had caffeine. Like he so strict on that. I'm, I'm a little less strict on that. I'll pop Excedrin any day, but there's a lot of um, diet cokes in the fridge. Yeah, they're not Travis's. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> he wouldn't even touch Coke. So it's one of his other roommates, I guess. And uh, that was around April that you last saw him, right? Early you, April. You haven't, you haven't been back in town since then? No, I haven't at all. Um, okay, I thought I've somebody had mentioned your name and you've been back in town for like a week or a couple of days. Oh, I've, I've, been, I've been thinking about going there. So, yeah, I've been definitely planning on heading down there. Um, but you haven't physically been here since, since you left? Since I moved. No, I haven't. I was going to go this week, actually, while he was in Cancun and stay at his house, but it's just not in the budget, so. Well, um, was that something that you guys had scheduled, that you were going to come down and stay at his house when he was gone? Yeah, oh, no, actually, not. that's what I emailed him about last week, because it was kind of last minute, because I was going to go, I'm looking at a calendar here, I was going to go not this week, but the next, and then he was going to come up here that following week, which was before July, and, um, it all sounds kind of weird. We're all like travelers, um, and I figured, you know, it would be a good idea if I, I would have a place to stay. His house is open all the time to friends. I mean, anybody in his business or anybody that comes to visit, he gives up his bed. He'll sleep on the couch. He lets them have the whole room. Um, so it just didn't seem like he said the door is always open. So I would have felt totally okay just showing up and staying in his house and eating his frozen dinners, et cetera, et cetera. And he would have been fine with that, too. And I just, you know, he said, just always give me a heads up. So I, I asked him, you know, let me know if that's cool. If not, I'll make other arrangements. And I never heard back. And when was that email sent out? Uh, just a few days ago. I'm in front of the computer, so I can check right now for you. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Please. Yeah. Hang on a sec. I just log into my account. What's he, his email address? Yeah, to his email. Yeah, well, what is his email address, you know? Offhand. His email is um, travis.alexander at gmail.com. Um, let's see. I sent one on June 7th. Haven't heard back from you. He got a little bit upset when I said I wasn't driving out to see him, mm -hmm. but he... He gets upset real easily. Um, I don't know. He just he likes to hand over me a little bit, and we kind of guilt each other sometimes. So you guys still had a fairly decent relationship as friends. We did. Um, we had. Because the people really that we talked to said that you guys uh, that your relationship was kind of rocky and uh, it got a little it got a little crazy at times. Or it did. Um, what happened was when I. I broke up with Travis around last year because it was all really dumb. It was a bunch of drama. I uh, had the suspicion that he was cheating on me, and so I I looked in his phone to find out and I found all these text messages, and, like, it just all blew up, and it was like we realized we couldn't trust each other. So, I mean, we broke up at that point, but we were still, we were still attracted to each other, and we still loved each other. So it wasn't the best thing, but we still hung out all the time together. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it didn't really help either of us to move on because I haven't really dated anyone since. And he told me that he hadn't dated anyone since, but then he told me yeah, that he has. So it's all been kind of weird because we kept our dating lives sort of from each other, like a don't ask, don't tell policy sort of. And uh, just, I think it was it worked out. It was more convenient for us. I, I figured, you know, if he didn't have a girlfriend, then I'm okay coming over. And as long as he didn't think that I was with anybody, then he was fine, too. So just the less we knew about each other's uh, dating lives or romantic lives, the better that we were, the better off we were. So um, it was sent June 7th. Yeah, this is the one I sent about letting you know that I came And uh, what town are you in again? I'm sorry? What town are you in again? I'm in Wairika, California. Y R E K A. Y R E K A. Uh huh. Oh, where is that at? It is um, 15 minutes from Oregon, and it's on Interstate 5. Okay. All right. So just right. Oregon border. Yeah. Okay. Finland. Not close.
Coast. No, unfortunately. Um, I had some other questions. I'm trying to remember what they were. I mean, it, you kind of lived in the house for a while. You, you knew the surroundings and set out the kind of furniture yeah. he had, the bedding and stuff. Okay, can you describe his, his bedroom bedding and stuff for me? Um, it's kind of an unusual question. No, that's fine. Um, I spent a lot of time in there. Um, he's got like, I don't know if it's like Egyptian cotton or whatever, but it's a really nice um, brown um, linen, and it's soft. It's not like flannel, but it's soft. And uh, he always brags to everyone about his IntelliGel bed. Like, it's really comfy. Um, so he's got a great mattress, and it's like, apparently it's like this $5,000 mattress that he picked up for really, really cheap because it was a showroom thing or it was a return or Somehow he got a really sweet deal on it. So it's a king size. I don't know if it's California or what, but it's a king size bed. It's kind of like a, I think it's like a sleigh bed. It's dark wood. Okay. Um, but the bedding is, is mainly like a brown linen, really mm -hmm. nice cotton linen. Yeah, he has, it's maybe different patterns on the sheets versus the, the comforter, but the sheets are brown and the comforter is brown and the pillowcases are brown. What? So the color of uh, the comforter is brown as well? Does it have yeah. any type of pattern or? Uh, or it like uh, tassels or edging? No, or? I think it had stripes. I think it had like, and, and they're not like colored stripes, they're just like stripes in the brown pattern itself. So oh, like, you know, it's, it's dark brown, but it's got a little bit darker brown, yeah. like threading? Yeah. Yeah, you can see that there's a pattern there. And the sheet may be more of like a checkered thing, I think, if I remember correctly. And it's his cover too. His, his bedspread is like it's a down comforter that's white, and then it's got like a I don't know what he used to call it. It has a special name. But so it's, it's like, like a duvet cover. Yes, it's a duvet. What What does the duvet look like? Um, it it comes like like it's it's got buttons on the end, and it covers the whole thing. And you slide the, the actual comforter inside the duvet, which is what you pull off to wash, or you know, or you can that kind of thing. So, and we've, like many times, it's so hard to get in there with one person. So, you kind of just grab the corners and we pull it in together on one side and then you just sort of fluff it out and then button up the button. Yeah, because that, that down kind of just shoves over in one corner and it doesn't want to spread out. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, it, it didn't have, like, any, any type of uh, edging or tassels or anything. Like that, you know, it's like a light brown. That's what I remember. Is there anything in the house that it resembles anything with some type of small tan, ropish kind of material or, or edging or anything like that? A blanket? He may have pillows. Yeah, he may have had pillows. Um, yeah, he has pillows on his um, on his bed, not on his bed, but on the chair that's yeah. next to his bed. Yeah, so there's some Yeah, there's those. Um, there's also a round pillow that he uses. I mean, he's bed and there's just one, he puts it in the center. And there's like, there may be some kind of tassel thing on that. Do you, do you know anybody back here still that still has contact with him? Uh, yeah, lots of people, tons of people. Is that how you found out about what, what had happened? A friend of mine, Dan Freeman, called me last night. Um, I met Dan through Travis. Dan Freeman. Freeman. Yeah, F R E M A N. Okay, yeah, we, t we talked to him as well. Yeah. I met him last year with his sister when we all took a trip out to the Grand Canyon and to Sedona. So he called you last night and told you what happened? Yeah. Yeah, he did. He didn't have a lot of information. Any idea what, what everybody's talking about, what, what they're saying, what their suspicions are? Um, they're saying, what, everything that I've heard was that, and I got a lot of my information from Bishop Layton, um, with more details, um, and he basically that they, they took everybody and separated them, and I don't know who everybody is, I'm assuming Zach, because he was there, and his girlfriend, um, because I called Zach's cell phone, and she couldn't tell me anything, but she answered. 
and she said there are a lot of people here that I don't know, but um, Zach's not here, so it didn't make sense. And I, I just, I was confused, but she couldn't tell me anything. So I didn't get a lot out of her, but Bishop Layton said he was there for four hours, and they interviewed everybody, and then they all went to the police station, and um, that it, they're treating it as a suspicious, excuse me, as a suspicious death. And I, I heard from my friend, um, Dave Hall, that there was a lot of blood, and I don't know if that's just a rumor that's going around or true. But, and I also heard that his services will be in California, but that they haven't released his body to his grandma yet. So um, that's all I've really heard so far. Well, I, I can tell you that we're investigating it as a homicide. Okay. And not a suspicious death anymore. It's pretty obvious. And it's important for us to find out why somebody would want to do harm to him. Uh, exactly. Um, what kind of stuff he was possibly involved in, or um, it, or maybe it just could have been as simple as a, you know, a burglary, an intruder, or something that had gone wrong. I'm wondering, because he's so, when you said, like, when they said suspicious death, I thought, well, he's trying to ship pounds for Cancun, so he looks good in boxes or a bathing suit or whatever swim trunks and um you know I know that he takes or I thought he takes supplements and he works out really really hard and in a workout and it's a very intense routine and, and um he has these heavy dumbbells that he uses and he's yeah. so strong I mean there are a couple times we've tried to wrestle just for fun and show me some moves and there's just no like I don't see how anyone unless maybe there were two people I don't see how anyone could overpower him unless yeah, there he, was he's a, a pretty good sized guy yeah, yeah he was Close to 200 pounds, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, it would take, I would say, two people, if not maybe more, to kind of overpower him. Um, I mean, I've, I've tried with officers, you know, working this job to take down a, a woman at 135 pounds who's out of control, and it's difficult to control, you know, somebody yeah. like that. Um, no I idea has come to mind uh, why somebody would want to hurt him. It's, did we he talked for a money? Did, did he have any worries or concerns about anybody? He did owe people money, but I, they were all good friends. They weren't like it wasn't a bad situation. It was, in fact, they were. There was one family that lent him money that's very, very wealthy, from what I understand, and it's not like it hurt them to lend him the money. Of course, they expected him to pay it back, and he had a, got a very reasonable timeline. And they also had a really good collateral in case he didn't pay back. Um, they they owned a piece of stock that he owned, so if they didn't pay him back, it was like $6,000 or something, uh -huh. um, or yeah, I think it was 6000 but if they didn't, if he didn't get them paid back on time, then they would just keep his stock, which would eventually be worth over 25000 so I mean, right. I don't think they were worried about that at all, um, those were, that's the Hyatt family, I think Brent Hyatt was there last night, um, but I don't, I don't, I, that was when he was struggling financially several months back, and, and, um, I don't know. I haven't talked to him about how that's going since, um, but I know that that's... What's the um, situation with, with the car that was... Uh, somebody mentioned a BMW. Yeah, I'm buying this BMW. Okay, because we found a check that was written by you uh, to him. Mm -hmm. I think it was last month. Yeah, um, yeah, I recently mailed him a check. Um, he, I mailed him that and a few other things. He, um, I'm pay making payments to him. Okay, and on you, you still have that car right now? No, it's actually not in my possession. I did the dumbest thing. Um, I went and hooked it up to the U-Haul. Everything was cool and set to go. And I, d I got the dolly that where the back wheels on the ground because it was cheaper. Yeah. And the U-Haul guy said, okay, drive it up here. Okay, stop, brake. And everything was cool. And I stopped the car, turned it off. Um, both got the car, left the door open so they could look at everything, and they shut the door and said, you're good to go, and I took off, and this is going to sound really dumb, I realize now that this is not how you tow a car, but I left it in first gear, yeah. and I started headed down the highway, and I blew the engine to smithereens. Um, oh. It looked like it gave birth all over the highway. There was just black oil everywhere. And um, so it's sitting at Wes's Auto something, last time I checked. Um, it's sitting there in Mesa, and... Uh, the guy's been really nice about just keeping it until Travis figures out what he can do. We've called, we've called lawyers about it, and my lawyer said um, 
you know, um, have your insurance fix it, and his lawyer said your insurance might not fix it because it might be considered mechanical. So that's the last we've talked about it. We've been, um, he's been real busy and hasn't had a lot of time to attend to it. And I have a vehicle right now, but not for much longer because I have to give it back to the bank. So, um, you know, when, either when, way. When did you ma mail that payment in the bank? Um, it was a few weeks ago, yeah. It must have been. So you're still, you're still making payments to that? Or? Oh yeah, in fact that's my first payment because we I just we just did this car deal like right before I moved and he said we had a oh, oh we have a um, uh, buyer's agreement too I think that I checked out and mailed to him um, but uh, we have like he said just get on your feet you know and then start sending payments and the agreement was no X amount per month whatever I could pay so finally got a job and. Gave him that payment for two hundred. What was two hundred dollars a month? Yeah. Okay. It was um hundred dollars a month minimum. Okay. You know, minimum, and if I could pay more, pay more, please. You know. Okay. Uh, we did talk to certain people, and um, I mean, I don't want to tell you this. <laughs> I don't want to make you feel bad, but uh, there's they didn't have the the best of things to say about you. Okay. Um, they felt that you were um, either taking advantage of him or um, just, you know, hanging around when you weren't wanted. Um, they mentioned that you would sometimes, you know, end up going into his house. And you were in his house when he didn't want you there. And he would ask you to leave, but you would continue to return. There was also some, um, some talk about you, you know, spying on his Facebook accounts, those kinds of things. Um, oh, he gave me his um, he gave me his Facebook password and his MySpace password, and I gave him my but I gave him my Facebook password and my Gmail account password. And the reason we did that is because it was kind of dumb. We did that months and months ago, and we thought, um, what what can we do to try to reestablish trust between us? Okay. And um, you know, well, why don't we start with that? And so that's what we did, and then. You know, it just didn't work. He got really upset finally, and he's like, you know, this isn't working. Um, and I said, all right, this is too much of a headache. Let's just change our passwords. So we did. We changed our passwords after that. How now, long ago did you guys change them? Uh, I changed mine, gosh, not long ago, probably three weeks ago maybe. And I don't know about his because I haven't, once he made it clear that he wasn't comfortable with that anymore, I didn't even try to get back into his account anymore. Really? I know it's... You know, you just have to trust sometimes. You just, it's true. Yeah. It's true. And I told him, you know, we've had, we've had hours upon hours of conversation, and I said, you know, I just don't know if, if I could ever trust you again, you know, and, and he, he doesn't know if he could ever trust me again, because I might always want to get back into his phone and find out, does he really have something going on or, or what? Because, you know, he did at one point, um, or, you know, and so... He said, yeah, I understand that, and he said, but if we were married, you would have all my passwords to everything because there wouldn't be anything to worry about. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's nice, you know, yeah. but we're not married. <laughs> so, and as far as getting into his emails, that never happened. Um, what he has on his computer is um, he would oftentimes just leave his computer on, okay. and he'll leave his Gmail window up, and there were times when I got on his computer to look up other things. And if his Gmail window was open, then I would just close it. That would constantly get into his email. Um, you know, I had to mention that to you because uh, we are getting a, a search warrant for his email, uh, or, you know, Gmail and Facebook and those yeah, accounts. And we can tell where those things were accessed from by IP addresses. Yeah. And I just, want to, I just want to make it clear that, um, you know, that if, if you did access it from somewhere else at a, at a certain time, you know, if you access it from California, we're going to know. Yeah, I'll tell you right now that I did. Okay. He gave me his password. Not, the only accounts that I've accessed, though, were MySpace and Gmail because those were the only passwords. And how long, how long ago? When, when was the last time you actually accessed them? A uh, week ago. We had, um, we had a conversation where it's like we keep made it clear that he wasn't comfortable with that anymore. And um, and I said, that's okay. And he, and I 
changed my Gmail account password because he got into that too, and then he saw another guy's email there um, and gave me a hard time about it. And so it just was dumb. Just, you know, we're both trying to move on. And yeah. We're both, I don't know. I think there might have been on both parts. Um, for me, it wasn't so much jealousy as it was like I just, I just wanted to know, like I just wanted him to be honest. And for him, I think there, one of the reasons I moved was because we were spending too much time together and we weren't, we weren't moving on. And um, it wasn't able to. I mean, I guess I could have dated other people, but our social circles were so small that any time you heard about something, it did. Did you did you move down here the first time because of him? Yeah, I moved there because of him, and I moved away because of him. Primarily, I I also moved away for financial reasons. I'm back here now, but you know there are three main reasons I moved here. One, I moved my family two financially, and three was because of travel. And the main reason that I moved there was because of travel. Okay. Yeah, because um, when we first arrived on scene, I started talking to people and uh, some of his closest friends. Oh gosh, no, I said that. Didn't. That's how bad it was getting at me. And I, you know, I needed to talk to you to, to find out why they would say something like that. Uh, why would they would start pointing fingers in your direction right away? Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm. Maybe because I'm the ex-girlfriend, we had lots of fights. Was it? Was yeah. there a lot of issues? Uh, you know, I mean, obviously it wasn't. You know, it wasn't a great relationship. It was great for a while until we, until it, it all of my other, yeah, we started fighting because I, I did the wrong thing and I got him to see his phone because I had a suspicion I, that he wasn't being faithful and I found, you know, a bunch of text messages that were no good and um, rather than being an adult about it and confronting him, I, I kept it in and I kind of let it fester and, you know, I was miserable and I didn't know why and I wanted to tell him but I was worried that it would just lead to a unnecessary fight and then I realized was no kind of relationship so it finally all came out and he was really apologetic but we just both realized that neither of us could be in a in a in an adult relationship and that was June of last year. So at that point we um, we continued to see each other you know a long time after that. Well you know I am glad I, I did get a hold of you again you did call me because it kinda of clears up a lot of the questions I had. Of the concerns. Okay. Um, it's, it's not what I, I don't think it's what these people thought was you know, going yeah. on. Yeah. So. Um, really I awesome. should probably I should probably tell you that you know Travis when he got upset he would send me um, really mean emails. Um, he would send me mean text messages and things. Um, you'll find probably some stuff on his Facebook. I know for sure you'll find one on his Facebook and definitely in his Gmail, and you're welcome to access all of my accounts too if you want. Um, with Travis, well, we're when probably going um, to subpoena all his Facebook and Gmail and you know everything to, to see who he was communicating with, what he was saying, um, what he was saying to him. Okay. You know, uh, I, I'm not sure how far back uh, we usually go six months to a year. Okay. Case like this, you know, we need to know, you know, who had some type of beef with him, who, you know, why they would do something like this to him. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I hate telling people over the phone, but, you know, it's like I said, it is a homicide investigation. And uh, it was an angry situation. And, and when we see scenes like this, um, you know, the first thing we think is, hated each other. Uh, hmm. Somebody went in there to, to hurt him and, and they did. And they hurt him really bad. And he's a big guy and it would take, you know, like I mentioned to you before, it would, 
guy named Thomas Brown. Um, and I don't think that, honestly, I haven't seen or heard from him since he was kicked out. Um, I think his last name was Brown. I could try to find him on, on lbslinkup.com, but um, it was, it, you know, that was so long ago, though. That was last spring of 2007, March, even. And, and what happened was he got kicked out because he was considered, like, borderline sexual predator, not like a rapist, but coming on to girls and, and, you know, that kind of thing. And it just really looked down upon in the church. And so he was disfellowshipped, and Travis said, you need to get out, you know, get your stuff out of my house. And it wasn't a friendly situation. It was said over the phone because he and I were in um, Missouri and somewhere back east just touring. And, um, and um, Thomas was... So he ended up taking him out at that time? Yeah, he kicked him out at the time, but Thomas, you know, is, is, he's a really big guy, but he doesn't seem like, the, he doesn't seem violent. He seemed pretty gentle. He just seemed like a little bit thuggish, but like he was trying to act the part, not because he was that, because maybe because he thought it would, like, attract chicks or something. I don't know. Um, so uh, he seems, honestly, like, uh, I didn't know him that well, but he seemed like a big, dumb teddy bear. Okay. You know, and I just wanted to say, you know, again, that, that Travis and I had we had an, an on-off kind of relationship. Uh, I, I we just weren't talking a lot the last several weeks, um, a couple times a week, and I just keep saying, what if? What if I just gone down there? What if I had never moved and I would have been there? And I could have. Do you guys continue to talk this whole time? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. We, I mean, it, it was more sporadic. It was more sporadic, but um, we usually talk late at night, like 12, anywhere between 12 a.m. and or 1 a.m. and like 2 or 3 or 4 in the morning. He was kind of. Um, did, did he have any other cell phones besides? Uh, well, we found one cell phone. Uh, like, no, he. Had, I'm pretty sure he didn't. Otherwise, I'd know about it. He has his uh, Verizon cell phone and he had his landline. Um, this is sent to my cell phone on June 21st, 2008, uh, from Jody Arias. First saved message. Hi, Detective Flores. It's Jody Arias calling in regards to uh, Travis Alexander. Um, it's Saturday. I'm not exactly sure what time, but um, maybe you're off. If so, I hope you're enjoying your day off. If not, if you could give me a call back. My phone number is 831. 402 1901. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye. End of message. To delete this message, press 7. To save it in the archives, press 9. To hear more. How long did you guys actually know each other? We met in September of 2006 at the NGM Grand. Which was at a yeah, and that was the pre legal uh, international convention where tens of thousands of people go. And when did you guys actually start dating? Um, not for a while. We met in September. Uh, the following weekend, he invited me to church. And the following Wednesday of that Sunday, he gave me a copy of the Book of Mormon. I started reading it. I got baptized November 26th. Um, we would talk a lot and hang out a lot. and We kind of had like a thing, and there was definitely an attraction and an interest, but we weren't officially dating until about February of 2007. Oh, it's February right Day. Um, and I think it just uh, uh, a string of events sort of pushed that together. Travis has kind of a commitment uh, phobia, I guess you could say. Is that what you down, so, down here? No, I didn't move down actually until June, which was right about the time we broke up, ironically. So you moved um, in June of 2007, and you guys broke up soon after? Yeah, we broke up right about the same time. I've been in relationships before where the, the other guy wasn't faithful, and there's like a distinctive gut feeling that you just have, and that I've noticed, and because I've been in relationships where they were faithful, at least to my knowledge, they were totally faithful, um, and that, that feeling just isn't there. And so I had this feeling with Travis, and I gently asked him about it. He got really upset, and he's like, 
He's like, no, there's nothing there. Don't worry about it. And, and I knew he was on his phone texting a lot, and I knew he was texting these girls. And I was like, um, I was like, well, are you, what about your text messages? He's like, look, I can be flirtatious, but there's nothing going on. And I said, okay. So uh, this was last year, I think, in June. <clears throat> and one day he was taking a nap, and I felt this is why we lost. This is one of the reasons we lost all of our trust. Um, I just I shouldn't have done this, but I grabbed his phone and I looked at his text messages, and I found there were tons of girls that I'd never heard of, and I knew that he knew a lot of people from the business, so I didn't worry too much about it. But what bothered me was there were um, not only were some flirtatious like I had suspected, which bothered me, but it wasn't necessarily a crime. Um, but there were plenty of uh, uh, there were like plans, like things like, um, well, where do you want to meet? Oh, well, I don't know where's the best place for a where's the best place, wherever the best place for us to make out is, you know, and I was like, what? Oh, my gosh, you know, we've been dating for, for a few months at this point, and, and he always said, well, we're not dating anybody else, and, and to him, that was, I think, reasonable enough, because I think in his mind, it, he was making out with other girls, but he wasn't dating them, was okay, and the only reason I think that's true is because of what we continued to do while he was dating Lisa, and I didn't realize that either, um, so I confronted him about it. Actually, I didn't confront him at first. I should have been an adult about it and confronted him, but I held it in for a few weeks, and then it all came out, and that's when we broke up. And so I just realized that I, I, don't, I didn't feel like I could trust him fully to be monogamous, and I don't think that he could trust me fully to not get back in his phone someday and then try to find something out. So. Yeah. Did you have a whole time you were down here then? You just kind of um, tried to work? And... I, yeah, I guess I figured, you know, like, Mesa is like the Mormon land of opportunity, honestly. Yeah. I just kind of look at it. So you just kind of been around town uh, doing your thing till April or so? I think you left. Uh, yeah, I hung around. I was in the University 6 ward, went there. He was in his Desert Ridge ward, and we uh, we didn't live that far apart. So, I mean, I was over there a lot. Um, not, not a lot, lot, because he had his own social circle from his church that I didn't really want to interact with <laughs> because I, I sensed that maybe there was a little bit of awkwardness there because of Lisa and because of Elena. And oh, I, that's right. I was dating Lisa right after that. Hey, you mentioned it. I mean, obviously you guys dated before. And yeah, we did. We dated were, last year. We're kind of just still really good friends but not you know, romantically seeing each other anymore. Uh, not exactly. Um, uh, we broke up last. Kind of. Yeah, and I would say there was there was certainly a romantic side to it, you could say, or an intimate side to it. Um, but uh, we weren't exactly on the path to marriage, anything like that, and we both knew that. kind of obsessive after the breakup and things like that. What, what, what was going I on that make them think that? The only thing I can think of, and I realize that, is because I was at his house a lot. Um, but I didn't go to his house unless I was invited over, unless he knew I was coming over. Um, he would send me text messages late at night saying, hey, I'm getting sleepy, dot, 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 with some Z's, um, dot, dot, dot. And that was like, that became like my cue. That became like our code word for... Um, I'm falling asleep, you can come over now and sneak into my room and wake me up kind of thing. And so um, that would happen a lot. And uh, I, I... I mean, I don't want to make this unpleasant or anything, but, I mean, um, was there still a sexual relationship going on after that? Yeah, there was. Okay. You were actually at his house was in April when you left? Yeah, it was April. I spent... Um, I had... My friend Rachel that I originally moved down with gave me a futon to sleep on, uh -huh. and I gave that back um, about a week, week and a half prior to moving. Her, her and her husband came out with his truck, and they loaded it up because they, they did, were just lending it to me, and I didn't want to move it. So they uh -huh. came and got it, and I didn't have a bed. And, and he was like, you know, you just come stay with me. So I pretty much stayed there <clears throat> for the last week I left. Yeah, his roommate said something about, you You know, the last day you had a U-Haul, and you were leaving, and... Uh, you had stopped by to say goodbye or something. Yeah, I had the U-Haul, and I, I was already there, but I parked it around the corner because it was huge, and I had a car, my car on the back of it, so I couldn't just park it right out in front of his house. So there's a there's a little, uh, if you go just past his house around the corner, 
I have the U-Haul parked there. Okay. It's like... So, that was so yeah. Do you remember what day April that was? I don't. I will not say... I keep thinking the 9th, but before you quote me on that, I can I can check. But towards the beginning of April. Sometimes. Yeah, it was like t more, more towards the middle, but it was already with maybe towards the beginning. Yeah. Because originally I was supposed to leave early April, like... April 1st, like it's a little after April Fool's, but I ended up staying um, another four or five days. Because it was like. Stay there with him or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with him. Yeah, yeah he I. Took a lot of pictures. Actually, he just bought a. He had just purchased a camera. Uh, yeah, I remember that. A, I mean, we found the box in his house and everything. Yeah, it's he. Um, did, did you help him buy that or? I did. Yeah, I was I was living here, but he called me for uh, advice and, yeah, I, and I was on the phone with him. That's who I called. I, I saw know. somebody who knew what they were doing before I bought a camera. Yeah, and I guess since I'm a photographer, he, he he texted me and he was like, "What do you think of this camera?" And I texted him back, "Well, what about this?" And finally, I was like, "Just call me. This is too complicated." So he called me and he was going over. I was like, "Ask her this." And so he was asking the sales rep, "Well, what about this, this, and this?" And where is the flash located and megapixels and the brand? And I was like, don't get into Kodak, you know, <clears throat> just different things. So eventually he settled on, I don't remember what he got, but it was, it sounded like it was a really nice camera. Do you remember when so, you bought that camera? Uh, April, maybe? I know it was after I moved. It could have been in May. Okay. Could have been in May. Um, I know it was after I moved up here because I was, I was here while I was on the phone with him purchasing it. So you, so never, you never got to see the camera then or anything? No, and I'm trying to remember. Well, we, Maybe. the reason I'm asking is because we found this camera, and, and, you know, it's pretty much ruined, and we didn't know why. Oh. I can't, you know, discuss why, but, you know, or how it's ruined, but you know, we just, it, we're just dumbfounded. We have no idea why somebody would, you know, destroy this camera. And, uh, oh. I wonder if you could describe it to me, but obviously you haven't seen it. You've never touched it, never seen it. So. No, um. Well, I think, I'm thinking there's a picture of him on Facebook where he took a picture of himself in the mirror, okay. and I think that's his camera. So, I mean, I can't tell what it is, though, because the picture isn't really sharp and it's a small resolution, but there's a picture of him on his profile picture on Facebook. Oh, where he is, kind of Calling Jody Arias. It's uh, 625.08 at 11.05 hours. DR 2008-161-0844. I want to say 45 minutes. It may have been longer. I guess I could check. 
And that was late at night? Well, technically it was early Monday morning. Okay. That was in a second. So, um, yeah, that, that was primarily what that one consisted of. And, you know, he knew I was taking a road trip that week, and he was kind of guilting me because I wasn't going to Arizona. I was going to Utah. Um, okay. Why was it a nice was there way. a conference or something in Arizona as well? Or? It was um, – the, the primary reason, I, and I didn't tell Travis this, but the primary reason I was going there was to meet somebody. Um, and, you know, we we weren't, like, totally open about our dating lives just because it was just an area where we just kind of decided it would be best to not give each other all those details. And so, you know, just because we had a past from before. And, you know, he we kept each other, like, moderately informed. Like, he told me a little bit about this person, a little bit about this person, but we didn't go into a lot of details. So I didn't tell him that I was making this big trip out to Utah to go see somebody. <clears throat> I think he suspected it, though. He was just like, well, who are, you gonna, who are you going out there to see? And I'm like, oh, nobody. I'm just going out, you know, to see friends. and Because we both have um, a mutual circle of friends in Utah, yeah. you know, from prepay legal. So I told him that that was the reason I was going was there is a – there's a briefing out there. It's called a business briefing, which happens every week on Thursday night. So um, I was looking for that, and, you know, I was actually – there was that reason because I knew I would see a lot of my friends that night, but also to spend time with, with my other friend that I was meeting. Um, and his name is Ryan. Um, so I talked to him that day, and later on that morning I got on the road um, – and my car isn't the best mechanically, so I stopped in Reading at the airport to rent a car. And someone had driven me there. My, my future soon-to-be sister-in-law drove me there. Um, and let's see. I got the car, came back to my brother's house, and took a nap for a while because I had been up all night. And then I got on the road, and I went to Santa Cruz. And I met up with some other friends who from the Monterey area. Okay. So I have lots of friends there, and I stayed the night at a friend's house there and visited it with some other friends um, the next day and then drove to L.A. so that I could see my uh, other friend's baby. I'm a photographer. I don't know if I told you that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm a photographer. She just recently had a baby, and I'm trying to build my portfolio with, um, you know, infants and things like that. And she was really excited. Name her name is Laura Brewer. She actually never called me back. She did call me back, but she called me back too late. So I couldn't just wait around for her. I had an itinerary. And she was that just was, a friend? or she, um, she was a really close friend. I dated her brother for about four years, so we were, we're a lot like family still. Oh, okay. Hang on just a quick second. I'm sorry. No I did talk to him on Tuesday night. Oh, Tuesday night. It was brief, though. So, um, like, that was a matter of just a few minutes. It wasn't, like, a really in-depth conversation. Um, what time it was? Oh, 10 o'clock, maybe? 10 p.m.? Yeah, I said 10 p.m. or maybe 9 p.m., 9.30, 10, 10.30, something around there. I could, I guess I could go back and check. About 9 to 10, anywhere. Uh, Somewhere between then. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a late, it was, a, like, kind of a late evening. I mean, for us, that's not late, but... What was the purpose yeah. of that call? Um, just call him, just check in and say hey, and let him know, just hi. Okay. <laughs> just I was just calling people because I was bored and I was on the road. Oh, so you were on the road at that time? Yeah. It was real brief. Um, he was he was nice and cordial, but he was kind of acting like he had hurt feelings because he knew I wasn't... Oh, he was probably... To As people are saying they, they kind of lost contact with him maybe on Tuesday. On um, Tuesday? Tuesday or Wednesday. Some people aren't sure. They're I, having to think back. I talked to him last Tuesday, and I, I'm sure I called him. I may have called him Wednesday. I know I called him again from the road twice. I sent him 
a couple of text messages. I sent him a picture. Did you actually uh, talk to him, though, when you were on the road? Um, yeah, but it was it was when I... When you first started. It was, yeah, yeah, it was... It was yeah, I did talk to him when I was on the road, but it was, I'm sure that was Tuesday night. Okay. And, uh... So I figured he was either in California, because he was planning to go there um, that week, I think. Because he, he had to, I, he, I know he was going to California sometime before Cancun, because... He was going to leave his dog with his grandmother. Um, I remember, didn't know at the time. Do you remember what time on Tuesday night it was that you talked to him? Oh, it was it was dark. So it was I think it was like maybe ten, maybe ten o'clock, nine, nine thirty. And at that time, you were still kind of like were you still heading to LA area, um, or were you already up going to Utah? Yeah, I was in Pasadena when I talked to him okay. that time. I think I was. I think I just left Starbucks or something, I don't remember. I don't know if I had gotten gas yet or what, but I left Starbucks and I was talking to him. Now, what was the conversation about? It was really brief. It was um, two or three minutes, and I just said, hey, you know, I'm on the road still, and I'm going, you know, he knew I was headed to Utah, and I just called because I had called my sister, and I think I had called, I, I may have called Ryan, I don't know if I called him yet or not at that point, but, um, I was waiting around for a while uh, for, for Laura, and she, I didn't know where she lived and couldn't get over her brother because he was at work, and I didn't want to just show up at her house because I hadn't heard back from her. So um, I was just killing time and called him, talked to him briefly, and... and uh, That's about the last time people were, were able to get a hold of him as well. And then um, what's unusual is, you know, people are saying, yeah, you know, we text him, and call them, and then pretty soon his, uh, his voicemail was full. Yeah, that's unusual, because he deletes messages. Like, he doesn't say anything. Even if it's halfway sentimental, like, he rarely yeah. says that stuff. So the next time you, you tried to call him, you weren't able to, to get a hold of him? Uh, no, I left him a message, um, and I sent him text messages. And he, he doesn't always pick up, but he's usually pretty good. And he doesn't always respond to text uh-huh. messages either, but... When I didn't hear from him for like two days, and I called him again, and I didn't want to be obsessive about it um, because, you know, we're not together anymore, and I'm just like, I don't like calling him too much, but we, he called me or I called him, and it, it was a pretty good balance. But um, at one point, it, it was like, okay, at what point do I start calling friends that live there? Yeah. You know, that thought crossed my mind, but I was like, no, he's in California. You know, he's going to Cancun. I didn't. So I hung out there for a while uh, at Starbucks and, you know, just refueled and all that. And we talked on the phone for a little bit and then just got on the road and went to Utah. Um, slept in my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a long drive from LA. It's about, it's about nine hours. So, yeah, it's actually just as long to go from. L.A. to West Jordan, as it is to go from Wairika to L.A. Um, let's see. So the meeting in Utah, when did that happen? Mm-hmm. That was Thursday night at 7 o'clock. I don't remember the exact location, but I followed Ryan there. Okay. Oh, so you met him there? Yeah. Yeah, I ended up, um, we crossed at his house for a little while and, you know, just hung out and all that. And then, uh, went to Phoebe and then slept a little bit longer because I was, you know, okay. until I got on the road and then... Yeah, I talked to her. I can't remember who it was up there in Utah. Um, they called me and just, they said they knew, they knew Travis. They said that there was a, a meeting on Wednesday or was it Thursday? Uh, there is a luncheon on Wednesday. <clears throat> I didn't go to that though. I don't okay. think I went to that. No, I, I went to some kind of meeting. It was at a restaurant. The restaurant owner's name is Chris, and he's in the, he was recruited by Brian. Well, maybe that's what they said. It, it, it's kind of like a split-up meeting. One day they had like a lunch, and then the other day the meeting. That's, that's yeah. What they meant. Yeah, I don't think I went to the lunch. Um, okay. It's like a thing that happens. At tw- it's the same kind of deal, only it's set in a restaurant instead of a like a business-style meeting. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the meeting, you just kind of sit for an hour and you listen to a presentation for 45 minutes or however long it takes. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, to lunch and you listen to the same thing, but you get to eat lunch, and it's in a restaurant. So did you ever stop by Vegas on the way up? I went through Vegas. 
No. <laughs> I go down once a year anyway for the free state legal thing, and I've never been a gambler <laughs> or that kind of lifestyle. So, uh, no, I, I just drove through. I drove through. Um, I, I went through Boulder City, and I went through Vegas. I don't remember all. I think Henderson, um, you know, until I went up through, I think it was St. George. It took a while. I was on the phone with the night with Ryan that time, but, um, you know, so he could keep me awake, but I still had to pull over anyway. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not shy about just pulling over wherever and sleeping in my car. Oh, and it's only time on the road. It is, it is. It's, it's not the smartest thing. I realize that. Um, I usually park my car in a place where I can just drive off if I need to, so I have it backed out instead of, um, you know, and I have the keys in the ignition. I've got, I'm ready to go, but... Either way, it's still kind of unsafe. Anyone could break a window or something. But. Oh, you know, this day and age, you can get yourself some protection or something if you're driving along. I was thinking of that. I know, and I, I just, I don't know. I guess I do. But, it's not too difficult. Um, say, well, California, I would say, is a little more difficult because, at least in Arizona, you don't even have to register any weapons. You just kind of, you just go by really? and that's it. You know, well, well I've actually looked into, I've actually looked into handguns um, because I have, like, I have a list of, like things that I'm really scared of that I'm trying to overcome, mm -hmm. and that's one of them. And, and being in front of a public crowd is another. And I was shaking when I sang the, the national anthem. <laughs> there was only like 200 people, but I had to hold the mic with both hands. It was shaking. So actually, I got that from Travis. It's just trying to push yourself and get out of your comfort zone and, and make yourself uncomfortable and do things that you're scared of. And, and uh, so I, you know, I've been looking into that. But handguns are expensive, and you know, it's not really in my price range right now. It's not. Um, but anyway, what was I saying with that? Um, oh, no, we just discussed, uh, that, you know, the next two days after that, you weren't able to get a hold of him and yeah, thinking and about calling his friends. And trying to yeah, and that's part of the reason I didn't is because I, I knew that I, it just, it didn't feel like my place any longer to be like his mother and, and calling his friends. And so, so you problems. knew about his, his trip in, uh, do you remember him telling you when he when he was leaving for his trip? Yeah, yeah, because we had discussed uh, dates of travel up here. So, um, I asked that he had said that he was leaving the tenth. I didn't know how long it would be. I don't know if it was four or five days or six days. Uh -huh. But um, I did know that the last we had discussed is his trip up here was going to be after Cancun and before DC. So it would be sometime toward the end of June, and it would probably be a, a four-day thing for me or a three-day thing. But longer for him because he was traveling along the California coast and then on to Washington. Okay, so he was going to leave the tent, and when was he going to come back? Um, I don't know I exactly. But I know that they're there. Oh. Yeah, have you heard has anybody? Well, when did you first find out what happened to him? Uh, Dan called me. Dan who? Dan Freeman. I'm oh, sorry. Dan Freeman. He called me uh, Monday, I think it was Monday night, but it, it was more like, I think it was late Monday night, like 11 something. And uh, he said, hey, how are you doing? I was like, Dan, because I had thinking, been thinking about him and I was planning my trip to Arizona and he was definitely on my list of people to visit. I love him and his family. Um, I used to go there every Sunday for dinner. Um, and, and I said, hey, how are you doing? He's like, great. And I said, hey, I'm thinking about making a trip out there. And he's like, yeah, I think you're going to have to. And I was like, yeah, yeah. You know, there was a pause. He's like, and then he's like, yeah, um, there's, there's, it's just about Travis. And I was like, um, what? You know, like, that's never good. Yeah, but, the way he said that, yeah. Yeah. So, but I didn't think anything at first. I mean, you just kind of, well, okay, what? You know, you don't want to assume too soon. And, and he said, uh, he said he found him. And I was like, what does that mean? Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? What, what, what do you know? Well, I don't really know anything right now. I just know that, that Brent Hyatt is at his house and, and Taylor Searle is at his house and that the cops are there. And I was totally shocked. I don't think that I said much. Um, I think that I just, I just kept thinking that maybe there's a mistake. Maybe there's a mistake. Are you sure? And he didn't really know, so I kept saying that maybe there was just a mistake because he couldn't say anything. He didn't give me any information, so I thought... He said I was the first person that he thought of to call, but I think he called um, a couple other uh, leaders in, in Travis's business first that were close with him. I don't remember who he called or what order, but he called me, and uh, I keep thinking that maybe there was, there, that they just made a mistake, and I feel like 
I felt so helpless because I wasn't there. If I yeah. still lived there, I was four, I was like 10 minutes away, not even 10, maybe seven minutes away. I could have just driven there but and found out and, and saw what was going on. I just felt totally helpless. What did you think about it? I mean, the last time you had talked to him was what? Was it Monday or Wednesday? What was it? I think it was um, Tuesday evening, I think. Yeah, Tuesday night. Yeah. Did you think of, you know, what was going on the last time you talked to him? Did you try to get a hold of him after that? Yeah, yeah, I did. I tried to get a hold of him. Um, I, I called him Tuesday night. Um, I called him subsequently and emailed him um, a couple times. I just, I just don't know. Travis was a friend to everybody, and yeah. there, even when things were bad between us, he was always, he would give his last, he would give his last dollar, his last whatever. He, um, he was telling me he had a BMW, and I was actually supposed to email. Yeah, I'm um, that to kind of yeah. burn it out or something. Well, you said you found, you said you found my check in his house. Oh, yeah, that you gave no, for a payment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, um, I guess, like, I, this is so dumb. Like, it seems so unimportant, but I guess I need to know if that check is going to be deposited anytime soon. No, no. Once, I you know, after his death, it can't be deposited, so. Really? Yeah. It's, okay, well, then I'll just consider that uh, whatever, and then, I, and then I'll just still owe the full balance until they figure out what they're going to do. Honestly, I, I trashed his car, and he took it so well. Um, we were trying to figure out between my lawyers and his lawyers and prepaid legal and the insurance and the U-Haul who was going to be held liable. And, you know, it didn't matter who was held liable. The fact was I, that was a debt that I had promised to pay and it's just money and it wasn't worth, you know, anything. So, um, I mean, as far as getting any, any contentions over, so um, he was never, he never had any doubt that I would pay him back, but he was trying, to, and this is what's difficult, is he was trying to um, work with the insurance um, to hold U-Haul accountable. Um, for how it had all gone down. He said the engine just blew up. Now the, now the vehicle was still in his name, correct? Yeah, he, still had the he was going to hold the title until I paid in and the balance in full. Did you guys have like so, a written contract or anything? Or? I had, yeah, what I did is I typed out an email to him and I sent it. And um, I just wrote back, just reply, I agree if you agree with this. And he wrote back um, something about you didn't say anything about insurance. And so I was like, okay, so I amended that, I think and then wrote back to him. And so that was our agreement. Our agreement was I pay him what I can each month until the balance is paid off. And I, I take care of general maintenance, like oil changes and tires and things like that. I don't know what's going on with it, with his car or anything. I think it's still at the shop, but uh, his family. I think it's just sitting there collecting dust. Yeah, um, his family's dealing with it because right now it's still considered one of his assets. And it goes, oh. you know, so. Yeah, and I was told, and I should, probably should have done this, but I didn't know who to get a hold of or who was doing what. And I should have asked Dan first, but I emailed his sister. To Nisha on MySpace, and I was like, yeah, I just sent her my condolences, and then I, in the next paragraph was like, you know, it's really hard, but I, I owe Travis this amount of money, and I, I know that at one point I'll need to settle this debt, and, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, but if you need to be in contact with me about this, my phone number, and you know, she didn't get back to me, and um, I don't, you know, well, you I, know, I don't. When a death occurs like this, it, you know, everything's got to go to probate anyways. Yeah, and I realize now that there's a Mike Chapman is the executor of his will, and so I. I did get in touch with him yesterday, and he said, um, just give me all the information you have on that matter, and then we'll go from there and decide what's going to happen. He never gave you um, his, uh, his voicemail from his phone? Uh, no. Did you ever obtain it at any time? Or? Um, I, I didn't have it, but he had one PIN number that he always used, um, and that was 1220. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that was his voicemail PIN number, too. Oh, and he had a garage PIN that I have, too, which is different. His garage was, his 1220 was his pin for his ATM, because there were many times when he gave his card to go get money. Um, you think he and that was just, his phone as well? It's possible. I don't know what kind of, I mean, mine's not password protected. Oh, mine is password protected. Mine, before it wasn't. So I, um, so the one for his, um, his ATM was Joseph Smith's birthday, so that's how I always remember that. And then he gave me the garage pin number, which was um, 0187. And I think that was Chris Hughes' birthday.